Oh, Steve Ballmer, welcome to The Jump. I'm George Sedano, in for our fearless leader, Rachel Nichols, today. I'm joined by our 2008 NBA champ and NBA analyst, Kendrick Perkins, and of course, our NBA insider, New York Times bestseller, Brian Windhorst. You just heard Steve Ballmer call his new coach, Ty Lue, the best in the NBA. And coming up, on the day the Clippers officially introduced Lou, what is the biggest obstacle he faces as their head coach? We'll discuss all that in a bit. But first, breaking news here on The Jump, according to our agent Wardianowski and Andrew Lopez, the Pelicans have hired Stan Van Gundy to be their next head coach. Van Gundy has coached 11-plus seasons with the Heat, Magic, and Pistons, and now faces the task of coaching Zion Williamson down in New Orleans. So, Perk, what's your reaction to this hire? Well, you know, um, I'm a big fan of Stan Van Gundy. Do I love the hire? No, but I do like the hire, and here's why. I believe that Stan, that Stan Van Gundy is a true definition of culture, and that's what these young guys need. I watched what Stan did for Dwight Howard when he first got to the Orlando Magic. Dwight Howard had some of his best years. He was a guy that was a, 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 a public icon figure at the time, and this is the same situation with Zion Williamson. I think that Stan will be the best would do right by him, put him in position to be successful. Uh, would the Pelicans contend for a title? I don't believe so, but I do believe that this is a nice starting point to develop culture and foundation. George, this is such an important hire. With where Zion Williamson experienced steadying hand, David Griffin really wanted to hire Ty Lue, but Ty Lue was in demand, and when the Clippers job came open, he just wasn't going to leave that opportunity to go to New Orleans. Right after that was Stan Van Gundy, and to be honest with you, after Stan, it was a lot of guys who would be first-time head coaches. So David Griffin had to execute this hire. From what I am told, he actually offered him the job over the weekend, um, and it took several days of negotiating not only the, the contract, but how everything would work with his staff to get Stan comfortable with taking it. And J.J. Redick, uh, I have been told, played a big role here. J.J. played for him in New Orleans, was a big part of the background and recruiting process. And so I don't know if it's going to work out, but I know that Stan Van Gundy is an excellent coach, and I suspect the Pelicans will get better with this hire. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Stan, as everyone is here, certainly. And, and Brian, I want to get to the Zion stuff specifically in a second. But, Perk, you said you liked it but didn't love it. Is there a specific reason why you don't necessarily love it? Well, here's why. I, I, I thought that they were going to go younger. I thought a former player in that position, especially with that young nucleus that they have, uh, Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, and Lonzo Ball. I thought that they needed to bring a guy in there that was going to be able to have a great positive impact on Lonzo Ball. I thought a guy like maybe Mark Jackson, a guy like Jay Kidd that played the point guard position. If you look at what Mark Jackson did for the foundation and the, and the culture and what he did for Steph Curry, uh, uh, he, he took the Golden State Warriors from, irrele from being irrelevant to being relevant, and then Steve Kerr came on in. If you look at what Jay Kidd did for Giannis in Milwaukee when he got there, he helped Giannis' game tremendously. And I thought that those two guys could have a real positive impact on, on Lonzo Ball, and that will take the Pelicans to new heights. And Brian, you know, Perk, I don't think you're wrong in saying, I don't think Perk is wrong in saying that. I just think that, Perk, there is just no room for gambling here. And, and Mark Jackson and Jason Kidd's resumes are a little shaky compared to Stan Van Gundy's. And so, it, look, it may not end up working out, but this was the safest bet that they could make on a guy who they feel can get this turned in the right direction. Because to be honest with you, with a young player, even going into his second year, it gets late fast. This hire was so valuable, so important. Yeah, I'm with you, Brian, in that regard. And I'm not trying to disparage uh, Mark or Jason Kidd. I do think both guys deserve another opportunity. I don't think there's any question about that. But you know what you've got in Stan Van Gundy. And a guy who brings defense to the table, eight out of his ten seasons that he's coached previously. They've been a top defensive team, and we'll get into that aspect of it in a little bit, too. And, and again, he's coached to an NBA Finals before on an NBA Finals team in the Eastern Conference with Dwight Howard. But... Brian, the Zion part of it, as you kind of alluded to, is so important. How much did that factor into this specific equation? And what do you expect from this particular relationship? 
Well, you know, Stan Van Gundy is not a guy who uh, plays uh, favorites or panders to players. He's a guy who is not afraid to get into his players' faces, not afraid to have friction. This is not going to be a relationship to make Zion Williamson comfortable and happy. It's going to be a relationship made to push Zion. And one of the things that needs to happen is Zion needs to bond with the organization. I'm not so sure how well it happened in the first year there. There's a little bit of a distance there. Uh, and, and, and I don't know if Stan's the perfect choice, but Stan definitely will elevate their level of play, and it's probably the type of disciplinarian that Zion could use. Perk, well, let me well, let me well, let me. Brian, find. That's, that goes back to my point that this is right. – I don't strongly believe it, that's what Zion need at this point of time mm-hmm. in his career – he don't need a guy that's going to jump into his face. He need a guy that's going to be able to guide him on and off the court. And that's why I said a player coach, a guy that played in the league, will be the best fit for Zion so he could show him the ropes not only on the court but off the court. Accountability is one thing. X's and, o, X's and O's are another thing. But, but, but being able to relate, that's a whole different thing. This is not back in the day. This is a new era. This is a new generation of players, and you have to find ways to relate to get the best out of them so that, one, they could trust you, two, that they're going to go to war for you, and three, that they know that you have their best interests in heart. But, Perk, let me ask you this. How do you establish that culture and also, you know, try to relate? Like, I think that's a hard line to toe in some situations. What? Well, this is, this is a prime example of what just happened with the Los Angeles Clippers. This is why Ty Lue is the this is why the Clipper team, not just not just the front office, not just Steve Ballmer, not just uh uh, uh Lawrence Frank wanted and Jerry West wanted Doc out, but the players wanted T Lou. The players wanted T Lou because he was young, he could relate to them, he know what's going on. They have they could have a better relationship and be able to coexist better. It's a way that behind the scenes a younger coach could go to a player and talk to them and they could relate because of the culture status. This is why they was like, you know, maybe Doc is not that guy. He's a lot older. He can't relate to the new to the new world of the NBA. So we want Ty Lu, and this is the same situation is what I'm talking about right now for the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, Brian, let, well, let me. Well, this is maybe why that's some of. In uh, whether it was in Miami, it was Jawan Howard, right? In uh, you know, in Cleveland, there was Damon Jones, there was James Posey. There were different guys that he could relate to. Ty was one of those guys when David Blatt was the coach. So I, I do think we need to see what the staff looks like. But, Brian, let me ask you this real quick before I move on to Perk, and I want to talk about uh, the defense of this Pelicans team last season. In regards to Stan, you know, the last in, in Detroit, 